hold on to your vision. Mm. Because sometimes, just say you want a space, and I'll use you for example, I'm making this up because it'll be a lot quicker, but say you want a space and it don't happen in a year or two years. Most people already stopped holding on to that vision. Mm. I said I was going to be flying private. I didn't get on my first jet until nine years later when my mentor cost me nothing, called me, said, hey, I got an opportunity for you to get on a jet. Mind you, my dream car at the time was the Bentley GTC. He said, come meet me at the office. I'm going to have you drive the Bentley to the jet. <laughs> I'm like, yo. But I never set up in my mind. I never stopped thinking that I was going to fly a private. Mm. I kept saying, I'm flying private. I'm flying private. I never knew when it was going to come. Heavy. And then it came. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. What's popping, everybody? Mr. J Hill Podcast. J Hill Podcast. However you want to call it. Yo, um, my guest today, super special, bro. Let me tell you why. I'm from Baltimore, right? Y'all been seeing it. Y'all been seeing the growth. It's lit. You feel me? But everybody that's in the city, everybody that support me, that's watching the, the podcast, I want to tell you how important it is to get out of your square, bro. It's so important, right? So I'm in Atlanta. Y'all, y'all know what's up, right? Y'all know the vibes. I'm in Atlanta. I meet David Shans, right? David Shans lit for real. I'm like, he he wanted the big dogs for real. This guy that I'm talking to, David Shans called one of the big dogs. So one of my big dogs that I look at as the big dog calling him the big dog. So I'm like, oh nah, man, I gotta get him. I gotta get him on a on a show. And um, I say I speak on being outside of your square, right? Because, like, these men, especially this guy, is getting to it. I mean, all the things that we look at as out of reach, he has. All the things that we talk about, I I, I said something outside that I I, I said, and I'm like, damn, I didn't mean to say it like that. I was like, you can't be bragging. But I'm like, that ain't bragging. You feel me? Like, that's really his lifestyle. Lambert, what is it, Lamborghini truck? truck. Right? (laughs) I mean... He great man, great, great man to his wife, great father, you know what I'm saying? Great businessman, entrepreneur. This man is really getting to it. And I'm just happy to be able to sit in the same room and interview this guy. Nehemiah Davis, hey, Davis is bro. in the building. What I up, dog? I appreciate you. Hey, that inter- that that I need that intro again. That intro hey, was fire, you know bro. What's crazy? I appreciate that. I don't really do intros. Yeah, that was good though. I, I, but I meant it. Yeah, no, I, I felt I, I felt that was genuine. Yeah, I, bro, hey, look, yeah. I appreciate you, man. And um you were just talking about something critical is that proximity. Like mm. we was just talking about it before we start interview. Like you in Baltimore, I'm in Philly. They like cousins, similar murder capitals. We had to get out of there just because of proximity, just mm. to get around better people. I, I moved to Atlanta. I said, listen, I didn't do anything different. My income increased because <laughs> of the proximity. You <laughs> around a bunch different. of people, they telling you to move a certain way. You working hard or you just moving different. So I appreciate being on the show, brother. Nah, no problem. Even like. Just even being around people that you can look up to and be like, like I, I'm not, I have pride and ego, but I'm not one of to let that get in my way. Yeah. So like, just being around somebody I can say I look up to, that's okay. Like yeah, people be scared absolutely. of that. Like yeah. I ain't looking up to him. You feel me? But like just being around people who really you could look at, and be like, damn, he really might be doing better than me. Oh, hold up, let me go get. Yeah. I thought I was doing something. Nah, this doing something. Oh, like man, you doing something too? It's just. <laughs> That's important, though, because a lot of people, they want to be the smartest person in their circle. I'm not the smartest person in my circle. If That's you're good. the smartest person in your circle, you're not in a circle, you're in a cage. Mm. So I'm being conscious about the rooms I'm in. Like, I want to be around my peers. They're excelling way better than me. That's why I love to see that you with Shans. You're kicking it because he's at a certain level at podcasting that you see a studio like you're i already told you 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 won't be here in a few months you're gonna have your own studio space and all of that um you know a big old space mm. similar to chance 
And it's simply because of proximity. If you mm. hanging around him every day, it's like, oh, he challenged you to become better. You know what I mean? So and that's Dennis, just important. Like you said, proximity to add to that, right? Like I I saw his space, right? Yep. And it wasn't that I thought less of myself, right? Or I didn't think I could get it, but I never saw it. Yep. So I didn't, so on my it wasn't even on my mind to get a space. Like that was never on my mind. Like I want one of these because I never seen it. And I, I granted people have it, but I just I was worried about other things. Yeah. As soon as I walk in the door, I'm like, oh nah, I'm getting one of these. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. this is next on the yeah. list, right? Yeah. And I can only imagine some of the things that's next on your list because yeah. of the people you're around. Hey, bro, and it, and it starts, it's funny you say it, bro, everything that I have or everything that I do has been the result of me seeing it somewhere else. Mm. Me working at the private airport, I didn't know flying on private jets was a thing. Mm. I never knew there was a such world. I only thought commercial existed till I got fired from my temp job. Every single day I would see millionaires and billionaires fly in and off of private jets. I'm like, man, this, and I did it for about a year. And I'm mm. like, wait. I'm going to do this. Now, the key is this, though, and I want, I want everybody to understand this and listen, put it in the comments or whatever. Hold on to your vision mm. because sometimes just say you want a space. and I'll use you, for example. I'm making this up because it will be a lot quicker. But say you want a space and it don't happen in a year or two years. Most people already stop holding on to that vision. Mm. I said I was going to be flying private. I didn't get on my first jet until nine years later when my mentor cost me nothing, called me, said, hey, I got an opportunity for you to get on a jet. Mind you, my dream car at the time was the Bentley GTC. He said, come meet me at the office. I'm going to have you drive the Bentley to the jet. <laughs> I'm like, yo. But I never set up in my mind. I never stopped thinking that I was going to fly private. Mm. I kept saying, I'm flying private. I'm flying private. I never knew when it was going to come. Heavy. And then it came. I didn't have the money to fly private at that time. And it came. And, and then every I've probably been on 100 jets since then. But it all started with me holding on to that vision, having a mentor, being in the right proximity, and just seeing that it's important. That's why I tell people all the time, they think it's like funny. Like go, they think it's so like corny. Go look at your dream homes on a Sunday. Go drive around, uh, search on Google, Zillow, million to $10 million homes, open houses. They require no pre-approval letters, no paperwork. You just go envision that. Take your kids too. So they could see that is a, there's another world other than the row homes that I grew up in. I'm sure Baltimore got row homes as well, right? Yeah. So a lot of vacant homes too. Exactly. I was serious when I told you. Yeah, by the whole city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was dead ass. Yeah. It's cr I'm I'm glad we can have this conversation because coming from the same space, but it being in different spaces, and I embrace that. Like I love it, right? So I don't people be intimidated, but I love it, right? And I I love that my audience can see, right? So I say that to say. I um I, I swear to God, I sent the text to my girl. I'm like, bro, hanging around this shit, talking about Shans, right? And we're going to talk about you too, because I'm going to get my invite, but we're going to talk about that. Else. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, hanging around this shit, I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah. Right? That's like, I'm going I'm to make a million. And as kids, we always be like, I'm going to be a millionaire, right? We say it because we like, we want to reach for the stars, right? But when you when you talk talking about proximity, being there is like, nah. I really can see it happening sooner than later. Like yeah. this is about to happen, right? Yeah, and it's only right. because it's not even a, it's not even really a dream at no more. Because at first it started as a dream, but it's like nah, I can see it. Yep. I, they they got the game right there. All yeah. I, all I gotta do is listen. Yeah, and <laughs> apply it. And apply it. Yeah, that's the key, bro. Talk that's to the me. missing piece. Apply it. Yeah. Everybody know how to be successful. What it takes to be successful. Yeah, it's a whole different it. world. Yeah, they ain't they ain't trying to do that. Talk yeah. to me about um. You said hold on to your vision. Yeah. So, I mean, bro, I've been a full-time entrepreneur the last 15 years. And mm. uh, similar like you, I always say I'm going to be a multimillionaire. I used to say it. Even I was just saying I'm going to be successful. I didn't have nothing. I'm flat broke, bro. Even me, try. I'll give you the first thing because it's a few things when it's holding on to your vision that's critical. You can't share your big dreams with small-minded people. Mm. So when you're telling somebody you're about to go get a studio, about to go, you got to be very careful who you tell that to. Because some of the people you're telling it to, some it's two people you're telling that to. Some people want to see you do good, but not better than them. Mm. The second person you're going to tell it to is somebody that really loves you a lot, i.e. your mom, i.e. your grandmama, maybe even your dad, or maybe even the spouse. They want to see you do well, but they don't want you to fail, and they don't want you. Sometimes they don't want you to attempt something new. So when I used to tell my grandma I'm going to travel around the world. 
I had no money, flat, broke, zero, no passport. Baby, don't do it. It's dangerous. Mind you, I'm from Philly. You from Baltimore. It's just as dangerous to walk out of your crib. You could get rocked. So I've been to 56 countries, but because I loved her so much, I could have deprived myself and been to zero. Why? Because that person I love so much told me don't do it. Mm. So a lot of times, so many dreams have been halted. So many dreams have been stopped in their track because somebody you cared about said don't do it. But they told you don't do it, not with any evidence or without any proof. They just told you because they operate out of fear. It's like having a it's like you going into your job and when you work a job telling your coworkers you're about to pursue entrepreneurship full time. It will never make sense to never. them. It can't even is nothing you can say for it to really like switch because they don't understand that world. Mm. So it won't work. Mm. So when mm -hmm. I say hold on your dreams, I tell people your dream may not come true when you want it to. It took me 15 years. I start living my dream life a couple years ago where houses the cars and like where it was like oh crap i really could do almost whatever i want to do with a relative like it's not right now in my life is nothing that i cannot do that i don't that i haven't done yet mm. nothing got my dream home building a dream home got the cars my wife is set my mom is set retire my mom retire my wife run a couple run several businesses hire a bunch of so it's like i'm sitting there i can't travel any differently mm. you can't travel any better than first class or on a private jet i can't i've been to 56 countries i've been i've running out of i've been to all the ones i really wanted to go to now i'm just going going deeper but guess what it wasn't like that i had to hold on to the vision i had to keep plow on the ground i had to set up in my mind it gotta work or gotta work you gotta create a mentality that success must work by any means and I don't think people understand that. So when I say hold on my vision, it means getting ready to get dirty and not giving up. I wanted to talk to you about, it's another side of that though, right? Yeah. What's, what's dope to me, yeah. right, is you said nine years, Yeah. right? Nine years, I'm just starting to do what I wanted to do really, yeah. relatively compared yeah. to what I've been you doing. You mean right? right now, nine years? Yeah, like- For you. No, you said yeah, yeah, yeah. it was nine years. No, that was nine years until that was nine years until the until the private jet. I would say that was about 12 and a half years. Okay. 12 years. Because it's been 15 years. Last three years been like, oh. It, right. It's, so it's, let's say. So 12 years. Let's 12 years until yeah. you really started doing what you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Nine years until you saw something that you dreamed of, yeah. right? I want to talk about that because, like, now, for, now not only we're living in this microwave age, right, but it's like it's it's almost becoming popular. And what I mean by that is somebody, people, every day you see an overnight success, right? Right? And it's starting to become the norm or it's starting to become, man, if I don't do it like that, if I don't, I have up until this age, if I'm not doing it like this person do, I want to quit because it ain't coming fast enough. Yep. How important is it to hold on to your dream in, in that sense of seeing, you might see somebody in your circle doing everything you want to do and you've yeah. been they they started two years ago you've been doing it for nine years and it's like i still ain't do half as much as they doing yeah. how important is it to still stay grounded in, in what you well, want well it's a couple things what i've done in 15 years somebody can do in two mm. first seven and a half years i had no mentorship mm. i had no guidance so it's going to be extremely hard to do what i've done right now somebody could come i got youngers that met me right now within a year they, they up I'm talking about life is unrecognizable mm. because they just listened to everything I said and they ran every play that I, do this, do this, do that, do this, do that, and they done everything. It wasn't you short, do it, and it mm. works. So I, now there's people doing what I'm doing in 15 years. You able to cut it into two, but you got to get a mentor as quickly as you can, mm. and you need to get multiple of them. So for example, Shans, that's essentially a mentor to you. So you're going to be able to collapse some time with all the things that he done. He's going you you're not going to bump your head on certain things that he bumped his head on that a lot of the other people going to bump their head cuz they got ego. Mm. I don't want to learn from another man. I don't want to learn from another woman. So I think it's two things you say, "Hold on, like don't compare your letter a to somebody's letter Z." Mm. Go try to compete against me been in the game for 15 years. It's like you probably, you still probably, could, most people, you probably could do better because I'm not that talented. I'm not that smart. I just got a work ethic and I'm willing to execute more than most people are willing to. But 
you can't come compare. I've been building this mindset for 10 plus years, reading books, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, The Secret, Think and Grow Rich. Like, I understand the ebbs and flows of business. I know things come in cycles. Sometimes we up, sometimes we down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are going to work, sometimes we're not. So I got 10, 15 years just on the mindset piece. Mm -hmm that it takes time to develop, right? Then I got years on, and this last year, 365, I personally invested $400,000 cash into personal development. Mm. Meaning I'm gonna go learn from people who are sharper than me and smarter than me. Mm. There's not many people I know personally that has invested more than me. None of my peers, none of my friends can tell you they invested more than me in personal development. Mm. This is how I'm able to come back and give a lot of my friends plays, because. I'm not the originator of all the plays that I'm getting. A lot of these plays, I've, I invested a whole lot of money, and then I'm applying it. Then they're like, yo, how did that thing work? Then I'm telling them. So the the to collapse your time is get a mentor, start investing in more information. Like, you should be spending so much time consuming information and sitting underneath somebody that's already where you need to be. So I want to break this interview, like, in two parts, right? Yeah. You got a lot of game. But I also want to talk to you, like, as a man yeah. to understand you, right? Yeah. So you, you gave me on game of how to, right? But in the moments, before you got to the 12 to do what you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Before you got to nine to get mm -hmm. on a private jet, right? Mm -hmm. Before you got there, yep. I'm pretty sure you was an entrepreneur already. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure you were seeing people that had success. How were you dealing? How were you feeling? And how were you dealing with your own emotions in, in those moments? When you see, when you might see somebody having so much success in, in less amount of time than you, how were you dealing with that? So, mm, I feel like I deal with that now more than I dealt with it then because now I'm in this world. I get to see all of these people moving at a certain rate, and just I'm like, man, they going crazy. Like I need to be doing better. At the time, personal development in my world wasn't a thing like widespread where a lot of people are on to it, right? Like. So at the time, I didn't have a lot of people. The people I was comparing myself to were my OGs. Mm. Like they were my mentor, David, 50 year old, 50, 60 year old white man. Like my mentor, Mark, 40 years old. Like they were all older. So okay. it wasn't never like, oh, it's going to take me time to get to where they got. So I, I can't really say I didn't do a lot of comparing at that time because I was like in my own. I was like a leader. Okay. Doing, I was like one of the only people in Philly. Like they knew me. I was a hustle man. I was gonna go get it. He was in Philly, so yeah. Yeah, but the people I was looking up to were kind of older, so I didn't really have that. I'm like, yo, they got time on me. How you dealing with it now, then? I deal with it now is like, I got to hustle. <laughs> like I see people out here. I don't really take off because I know somebody will lap my behind. Mm. I start looking at my homies how they move, and I'm like, yeah, all right. You got me messed up if you think I'm going to take a break. That's nah, why I, I somewhat had a little bit of depression <laughs> when I, I just got knee surgery. I tore my ACL and my meniscus, and he sur uh whatever. What's that crap called? I got surgery. Yeah, I tore my ACL. Too. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. You got surgery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I still I got, got the pins, and I didn't even get the second surgery. Yeah, I got pins, too. I don't know. They ain't giving me no second <laughs> surgery. That's chalks. <laughs> That's chalks. It hurts so Yeah, bad. I'm cool. Yeah, you ain't digging back in this joint. So I was down for like a month. Mm. But while I'm down, there were four different masterminds happening. And I seen several of my pairs, they out moving, grew, and I'm just stuck. I'm like, dang, they beating me right now. Mm. I don't like feeling beat. Like, I, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, it just don't sit well with me. I get up and I grind. Like, it don't. But it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing. You got to watch it emotionally because they say comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. Everybody really running their own race, and I still got to tell myself that sometimes because – you could be quick to compare, like, like, like you said downstairs, something about bragging. I'm like, damn, bro, this they ain't even really me. That this just it is my lifestyle. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? It wasn't. But it's also that was bad. I didn't mean because it's not. Yeah, bragging. I know you didn't mean it, but you, I'm saying your circle, y'all probably talk about that. That's what you. That's why I aspire to be like that. Is, yeah, I was just using that example, but I'm like, but that's how some people sometimes like. It's crazy that not relate like the, the hate you get from mm. people is just like. It's just it's just a crazy world. Like people like you, you know you could go get it too, right? You just gotta go put a little bit of work in. People hate to see people thrive right now. Yo, um Jay Z said and God did, right? I'm just um summarizing, right? He said he basically apologized 
if his lifestyle made you feel any way. Like, I'm sorry if my yeah. lifestyle hurt your feelings, basically. Yeah. Right? Because it's, it's, it's crazy how you can absolutely do nothing but be you. Facts. And it's going to hurt mm -hmm. so many people feelings. It's going to make them want to take from you. Yeah. Right? And I'm really here to pick your brain on when you're going through that surgery, right? And you're at home and you can't get up and you fucked up. Like, yeah. How do you get through that? Well, one, my wife was there, so that was half of the battle. You mm. feel me? So she held me down like at least three weeks. Well, it's the whole time, but I'm talking about, bro, that drone was brutal. Meaning, yeah. first few days, I don't, I didn't get out the bed. Like going to the bathroom in the bed, not literally in the yeah, bed, yeah. but you, like I'm messed up. My kids, you know, I tried to help out at night with my kids. My wife could, did that for a month straight. Me not helping out, nothing. I was down. Mm. So it just added that, man, I can't even move. Lucky I know how to make money. I have multiple flows of income, so that wasn't as bad. But it was hurting me that I couldn't be, because they said I couldn't get on a plane for six weeks. Mm. Mind you, I just paid all of these people to join their masterminds. I couldn't go to no events. So I missed at least four major events that cost me a lot of bread to go to. Mm. I just paid 150000 to join a group. I have yet to been go because they had one, two events during my surgery, couldn't go to neither. And they just had one when I had my own event, couldn't go to that. So I'm like, man, I gave these people buck fifty, and I couldn't even go to, I'm already done with 75% of the live events. Damn. Do you think it was a lesson coming out of it? The lesson really was, I mean, I got to spend a little bit more time with my kids and my wife. Um, no, nah, really, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think, the lesson, I don't, I won't say slow down because mm -hmm. I slow down, but it got me time to put more things in place with my family and, and, and legally, like meaning like I'm setting up certain things so my family is good mm. forever. What, what about you? You think it was a lesson in it? Like, cause you around them so much. Did you see something differently or a, a, a light bulb that switched? I'm curious. Mm. So because he's on constant go mode, there's things that he he gets to put a lot into his businesses, and sometimes he doesn't get to put a lot into himself. Mm. So not being able to do that, you miss certain things at home with your family. You you lack on the things that are important in your personal life, like for instance, bills and life insurance, mm. and things like that. Versus you know him spending all that time making sure he has the insurances for his businesses though. So I feel like. Um, that was a nice set on him as far as just letting, really taking family. Um, I like that. Did you feel that? Did yeah, you? yeah. I got stuff together during that time. I was really working on stuff. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money. And we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. I, it's funny, right? Because I'm, um, I'm looking at your page. I'm getting ready for the interview, right? And I'm like, hmm. I'm just thinking like, what angle do I want to come? And you really gave me the angle, honestly. And one of the first questions I wanted to ask you we already got started, but one of the first questions I wanted to ask you was, is what is entrepreneurship for you? Yeah. I mean, for me personally. Yeah, what does it mean? What does that even mean? Just, man, you got to go get it, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know better. Like, you got to really go out here and go make some stuff happen. And you got to be willing to keep going because it's hard, man. I don't want to sell these entrepreneurs a dream on. It's just easy. It's going to be pop. No, you got to get through the part where it starts getting easier. So you're going to be willing to do some hard work. I don't talk about when I was in my junk. I didn't talk about when I used to wake up 5 a.m. when I was working on my fruit truck, go get fresh fruit, 5 in the morning, ice cold, then come home, 
chill for a second, then go on a fruit truck, bag it all up, work the fruit truck from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night. Go home because I couldn't afford to eat on a fruit truck. I had to go hustle hard on a fruit truck to get a tip. A dollar tip would allow me, a dollar and 25 would allow me to get a rice and gravy from the Chinese store. There, you ever heard the term, you know, big say don't get high off your own supply. I couldn't eat all the fruit because the fruit was the profit. Mm -hmm. That's how serious it was. Mm -hmm. Go home, watch a little Wheel of Fortune, eat a little meal with my grandma. And then when I had my junk removal truck, now I'm out scrap metal in that night. Mm. They ain't see that. You know what I mean? I did this for two years straight. Like these are things people don't see. And for me, none of them businesses were never profitable, meaning create. I mean, the most I've ever made on my fruit truck profit in the day was like fifty dollars mm. profit. Might have made two hundred and fifty bucks, but the profit, meaning when it all was said and done, was fifty dollars. But no one saw that. No one saw me waking up early mornings, going to bed late night, scrapping metal, lifting up refrigerators by myself, water heaters by myself. And uh, I was I was looking at this, uh, listening to this video by Les Brown one day, and um, this young kid was stuck in a tree. His little brother was stuck in a tree, and he had to pull down a tree and break it to get him down. And they say, yo, how was you able to do it? And they said he was able to do it because he ain't had nobody there tell him he couldn't do it. Mm. So all I knew was lifting the fruit truck. Like, my mom was trying, son, how could you lift water heaters by yourself? How could you lift refrigerator? I didn't have a another. I, I'm throwing deep freezers the on there option. by my. <laughs> roar, like, I'm talking about going crazy by myself for years. Mm. It's because I never had another option. I told myself at that time I became mentally unemployable. Mm. So it wasn't most people have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. My plan was this must work or it must work. It's either this or death for me. Mm. And most people won't ever succeed in business because they don't really have that mentality. That dog, Mamba, that Kobe Bryant, like you got to have that type of mindset. And I don't care what you do is going to be successful. They think it's the strategies. Like they come to me, show me how to make more money online. Is your mind right though? Mm. Show me how to make more money in podcasting. Is your mind right? Are you willing to do this thing every single day? Are you willing to grind? And most people don't got that. So we ain't entrepreneurship is a mindset game first. You got to make up in your mind that I, I'm going to go do this crap. Period. So I I couldn't agree anymore. But I want to ask you questions just to invoke another yeah. uh, thought process. Right. Because like, I'm with you. Yeah. But I'm, when I'm asking you questions, it's really for myself, too. What's the all we know is to go get it. Yeah. That's all we know. Yeah. That's all, all we're going to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the end goal though? Like when when does it ever stop? I don't know. <laughs> I came in like for me, bro. I start making money, ten grand a month, eleven grand, twelve grand. That's where I was at in my life, and I stopped doing everything to get me there. It went from twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I'm like, golly. I said, God, if you ever give me the opportunity to get back up, I'm never going to take my foot off the gas. Mm. I haven't took my foot off the gas. So I really don't know what's the end game. I'm. It's a game. It's a sport right now. I'm just. I'm hustling. I'm just trying to make it happen. <laughs> but I don't see your end game right now. And the end game is more wealth, more opportunities, more businesses, more ownership. Put my family and my friends in position. Making sure the next few generations are set up. That's the end game, and that means I got a lot more work to do in order to properly do all of that. So. I probably got to answer that for you in about 10 years because I should have all that stuff set up. I mean, one would say that you got it set up, right? Like you got the dream home, like you said. Yeah, if you, you want it. But that's now. What about if I die tomorrow, it's a wrap. I mean, my family going to be good, but I need the business to still keep working if something happens. Most black businesses, if the person died, the business is over with. Mm. So I'm, I'm working to set up the business. If something happened to me, you still might go buy that digital product. You still might go set up this you still might pay us rent so that mean i got more work to do because mm. those things are now temporary and they fleeting like house car after a while once you get it i think i'm over my cars now i still mm. like my one car but other, but i think it's like don't matter anymore it's like up mm. oh, i barely drive my cars anymore so, so what makes you happy is it completing a goal or it like What's happening in this thing? Because it seems like it's just this this non-stop cycle of just going. Like, what 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 makes you happy and like genuinely happy in your soul and your heart? Like, damn, I feel good. Because it's like on the road that you're going, yeah. it seems like it's like you can never be happy. Yeah, that's a good question. My family is one playing basketball. Hmm. I like to do fun stuff, bro. Stuff that is like 
I'm like, yo, that was pride. Like, way, I used to wake up at, before we got injured, I was balling three times a week. Mm. And I would play for, like, three hours. That really made me happy, bro. Okay. When I was riding my cars earlier on, like, I would ride with my friends, I would really be happy. I can see that. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling good. Like, yeah. It's not many things that make me happy, though, when I think about it. That's a good, I don't know. It's not many things. I just know grind. I just know work. But after you do certain things for a long period of time, it's just like, it's just normal. Mm. Become like some normal stuff. Traveling, been to 56 countries. It's like, all right, I've done enough of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it don't make me necessarily happy like it did. I still like it, but it ain't like, oh, jumping for joy because of this. So why do you think you want to do so much? Like, why, like, why, why do you got to get it so much? Like Proximity, you- man. It's a, it's a bad. The only thing is when you change your circle. If no, I'm saying, why do you want to? Like, why do you want to get all this property, get so much money? Like, like, what's the purpose of it? No, I'm saying proximity is like when you start getting around other people, and they always talking about wanting more. I'm in this room with Grant Cardone, and them. It's about 100 people in the room. And the last year, just this group. Heavy talk. Listen to yeah. the, Google the name if you don't know. Yeah, this <laughs> last this one group of individuals in a room with last year they made one point nine five billion dollars. Mm. Grant Grant Cardone was talking to one of my buddies, Dan, and it was crazy. He said this to him. Dan was like, "Yeah, what you do last year?" He said he did four million. <laughs> I remember when I was broke. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, what the heck? Like it was crazy that he just said that, and I was like. I'm in that room. What you do? Nothing. I'm just like, <laughs> so. I sell that when you get in the rooms like this, it don't help you. Mm. Meaning, it just make you let me step my game up. Let me do better. I want more. Let me. So that's why I say proximity is power. Now, if you don't want more and you you content, go be the smartest person in your circle, and mm. you ain't gonna have nobody. You just gonna be drained from pulling them up, drained trying to keep them up, and no one's motivating you. So, I have a girl. I've been with my girl for five years, right? Yeah. So, you have a wife. I want to ask you about this part. What about, is it, does it be any frustration when everybody's not like you? Everybody's not going to be like you, and that's okay. Yeah, facts. What about the times when it's okay for wife, but it's not okay for you? Does that ever. What you mean? What you mean? Like, not okay. I don't know. Uh, you might want 100 million. She's like, bro, I'm good with 10. Yeah. Like, and, and 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 your need to as excessive need to continue to continue to continue might not be her need to continue to continue to continue. Is there ever a point like how do you separate the two? How do you fall back when you have to fall back and find yourself being too pushy? If you find yourself being too pushy, because I don't know the yeah. Dynamic. Um, or is it all just good? Like no, she, my wife kind of like down with whatever the mission is. Okay, she do want me off my phone sometimes, hanging out and all of that <laughs> stuff. I don't do that enough, but. <laughs> My wife just she like more go with the flow like okay. whatever you want I'm on type like I'm, I'm a rider like yeah, yeah that's yeah, pretty much it. how my wife is so I can't really speak to no one else's but I know a lot of times people relationships be holding them back they got somebody at home that's not really supportive of the mission mm. so yeah that's a problem like a lot of times when they just ain't supportive of the mission that be killing your morale you go home ready to share these big goals and they like talking you out of it or and all of that crap but i don't i don't think i can answer because i don't i don't really i was know. just curious because yeah. i um i know sometimes having that that opposite end helps right like my girl like she's taught me to really love myself and like just take care of myself yeah because it was so many times where like she being an entrepreneur you don't have time like you don't have time to worry about no life and sh- like none of that. it's like bro when I'm dead, I'm dead. Like yeah. that's how you think sometimes, yeah. right? So it's like, I um, I definitely appreciate that, but I can also understand the difference in. She's gonna put her, herself like, her mental. First, before all of it, because she understand that if she's not right right here, if you're not good right here, you can't be good physically, right? Yeah. I didn't understand that at, at one point, and yeah. I and I honestly felt like I rejected it a lot because it's like. Fuck that. That's an excuse. Like, we got to get the fuck up, man. We gotta, yeah. Like, so I, I was just curious, uh, did you have, ever have those conversations with your wife? Because I think that's a woman thing, like nurturing and things like that. Like, oh, no. My wife definitely going to nurture her. Like, she, <laughs> she going to hold it down, figure it out. Like, she good for 
she take care of all the kids, my mom, my wife. I mean, my, I said my wife, my, my Your kids. Your probably. Yeah, all yeah. of that. Just that nurturing spirit is just there. Nah, that's all. Yeah. Go, I want to go back some. You said um, you got to a point where he's making 9 million, 10 million, 11 million, 12. No, no. 9,000. 9, 9,000, yeah. 9,000, yeah. 10,000. 12,000, 11,000, 10,000. You stopped doing everything yeah. that got you there, then it started declining. Yep. But I feel like it's a valuable lesson in having it and losing it. Yeah, it is. Talk Speaking. to me about the importance of that. Man, You first I praise God all the time, dog. Like I'm talking about you don't know how grateful I am. It happened at that level. Mm. Cause I hear a lot of stories when it happened at a million, two million, ten million. <laughs> I just watched Fantasia say, "Yo, I've been broke. I went broke twice. I was all the way up. I've been broke twice." You gotta think about that, bro. I don't know what's all the way up to her, but I'm sure she was a multi-millionaire. Imagine, I wasn't a millionaire then. I was making ten thousand a month. Mm-hmm. That was just clearing six figures a year, meaning a hundred grand a year, and I lost it. And I'm like. I told God, if it ever happened, I won't lose it again. So I just work so diligently now because I don't want that feeling. I know what it felt like. So I'm just always grinding. I'm always just pushing away because I don't want that feeling of losing it all. And one of my activities that I do, bro, every single week, I go look at people who was up, old rappers, old businessmen, and I do that to say you can't become that. Like, I'm talking about they was up back in the day. Hit songs, hit business people. Now they hit. Like, they, got, hit. <laughs> they hurt out yeah, here. I look like, at their Instagrams, I'm like, it's bad out here. Mm. So now I just keep me in my mind, like, yo, you got to gotta stay on it, Neil. Did it, it had to teach you some things, though, right? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure it was some things you was doing when you got it the first time yeah. that you learned that. Oh no, I can't make that same mistake. I can't do that the same yeah, way. Yeah, it was don't don't stop working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like don't take your foot off the gas. Ga- like if you on social media, you don't take a year off of social media if that's how you make your money. Mm-hmm. Like people find something that works and they stop doing it. Mm-hmm. it. Don't make sense. If podcasting is working for you, you're building. Imagine you take a year off right now. You killing your momentum. You just let three thousand other podcasters come in the world, get in your space. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one of the things was always do what works. The second thing was just like don't get content. Like when you find something at work, you got to exhaust it. Like me and my guy, one of my uh, partners talk about like a lemon pill. Like we get a lemon, we want to go ahead and make the make lemonade. When we done with the lemon, we want to shave it down, make some lemon meringue pie. <laughs> when we done with the seeds, put the seeds back in the ground. When we done with that, like just we try and turn one thing into like as many things. as We try and juice. It should be nothing less when you're done with an opportunity. Mm. And you treat every opportunity, everything like that, and it's going to be hard to fall off. Mm. So my biggest lesson was just when you find something that works, never stop doing it. Okay. Even if you stop doing it, delegate it so someone else can do it. Mm. We talked about you talk about our masterminds, right? Yeah. And I see in, in today we see a lot of people uh, doing mentorships and things yeah. like that. But you know, to somebody that don't have yeah. all the money, is it's scary. Yeah. Why absolutely. should I pay for a mentorship? Like, what is he really going to tell me that yeah. that's going to help me? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What talk to me about the importance, but more importantly. Not the importance your experience in it and how it helped you. Yeah. Well, first off, just talking to that individual who you don't have to sign up or buy nothing. You don't have a good way to start that people sleeping on is YouTube. Go look. Go look on YouTube. That that will at least start getting you some information. Mm. Second thing you want to look on one of the most underutilized apps on people's phone it's the purple little app it's called podcast Mm -hmm. go look it up go look at your podcast go pull episodes out that interest you go on david shan's podcast go on eyl podcast go on my accelerate the great podcast you literally can go out here and learn everything you want essentially for free Mm. really just go search it go on youtube there's a lot of people that's giving away their best stuff for free like i give away on my youtube you go on my youtube You'll go make some money off of stuff, and you don't got to give me a dime. Mm. Now, the importance of the mentorship is proximity. Now you're having conversations with that individual that you probably wasn't going to have conversations with without making that payment. 
Now you are getting in room with other people. I'm not in these masterminds and these groups just for the owner of the group. I'm not in here for Jay. I'm in here for everybody who also paid 5000 10000 100000 to be in this room because they think like me. Mm. People in my mastermind, the amount of money that people are making together through partnerships wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for me. Because I put the room together, they all paid me $55,000 to be in my room for a year. Now they, you would, you would a hundred other people who did the exact same thing. We all thinking differently. We all, we all on it. Let's how, how can we collaborate? How can we get some money? So instead of you asking how much it costs to be in a room, to be in whatever, it don't got not my stuff. May not, I don't find somebody's stuff. Instead of asking how much it costs, how much is going to cost you if you stay in the same spot you in now next year? Mm. I don't never ask what it costs. What it costs if I don't do it? Because if you got access to information I don't have, you want me to try to piece this thing together for another year? Not happening. That's hard. So I think you should start at your level. It don't got to be a thousand dollars. Start with. There's people that got twenty dollar a month subscriptions, five dollar a month. I just saw five dollar a month subscriptions on Instagram, where you could just learn. And as you learn, and the key is that you, as you're learning, the, the purpose with learning is to remove the L so you can earn. As you're getting the information, you should be applying it as quickly as you can. My brother Marcus created this, uh, Marcus Y. Roja created something called Speed of Execution. And it basically talks about as soon as you get the idea, you implement it as quickly as you can. And say, say you told me to run and play on my podcast, right? You give me some game on the podcast. I go do it at work. I implemented it, right? Just say I paid you with it. Now I want to go do that again because it worked. So now you just start paying. I, I just became addicted to paying for information because every time I use it, it works. It make me more money. So now I'm going to pay the next person. Make me more money. I'm going to pay the next person. and Make me more money. Every time I make an investment in myself, I say and know that I'm going to get a 5, 10, or 15x return on that investment. Period. Mm. No matter what. I don't even care what you teaching. I know I'm going to get a 5 to 15x return, not only from you, but the people in the room. Because I'm going to ask my questions that I need answers to. Thanks. Yo, listen, if you listen to this, you probably got to listen on, like, a slower. You got to make, make it slower. Yeah. Because it's, it's just the northern thing, right? Everybody say I talk fast, too. When you said the learn part, yeah. you should have... You should have said that slow and pause. <laughs> like, cause the, the goal is to remove the L so you get yeah, hurt. Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, like, that yeah, was hard. Yeah. You got, next time you do that, you make you. sure you make an emphasis and you pause and look at the camera. So Say no more. Slow. Look over but, here. Listen, y'all, when you want to learn. I mean, in order for you, I don't even know how I go. The stuff don't yeah. even be, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be scripted nah, with me. Facts. But you, the, the purpose is for you to learn and eventually remove the L. Yeah, no, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one thing that, um, I'm trying to get out of right. I don't know if you did this, but yeah. one thing that I see from you, you got class after class after class after class, right? <laughs> so I'm assuming every time you do something or you learn something, you teach it and you sell it, or no? Yeah, no, not every time I learn. So it's not a thing where I go learn something, and regurgitate it, and create something and sell it. So I've okay. been doing event spaces for a while, mm -hmm. owning them and teaching people. You may go tell me. Okay, Neo, I think you should add a podcast room in your space. Now I might go add that to my course. Mm. I'm not going to come here and teach you how to go start a podcast now because that ain't my thing. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. But if you say, hey, you should add a room for podcasters, okay, that would be good. So I do have a lot of different classes, but they're really around the things that I only do. I'm good at digital marketing. I teach you digital marketing. I'm good at helping you monetize and grow your own brand. I teach that. I'm good at event spaces. I'm only good at a few things, and I kind of stick around those few areas. What got you into teaching it to then make money for more money for yourself? Like you say, you was juicing everything. You I saw this guy, Kendall Ficklin. Man, shout out to him, Kendall. He's out here in Atlanta. He came in one of my venues in Philly. He wanted to rent a venue. And I'm like, first I'm like, yeah, you gotta pay me. You know what I mean? It is what, you gotta pay to use my venues. Had his team kept pressing me, like, yo, wanna use the venue? End up letting them use it for free. Mind you, I do this process, and you guys wanna learn, go to eventspacemasterclass.com, but I do this process called, I show you how to find a venue, I show you how to fund the venue, I show you how to automate the process. So in the automation, it comes with a virtual assistant, and it comes with somebody who runs your, your space like a, 
a virtual assistant that comes with a uh, event manager, essentially. Mm -hmm. So how I set my space up, I didn't ever have to go. For some reason, I decided to go today. Went there. Kendall used the space. He had like 50, 60 people come. And he was teaching all of this stuff. And at the end, he said, yeah, I got this group called Grandation. And what Grandation does is it allows you to get in this community with other like-minded people. It's free for your first 30 days, and it's $50 a month. We get weekly and monthly calls. You get this connection. You get that connection. You get this connection. And I'm like, man, that sounds like what I've been doing for the last several years. Because mind you, I've been having all these networking events. Jay meets David Shands, right? I didn't connect y'all, but I've been doing that. Yeah. You, David Shands, go make money. Guess what Neo get out of that? Nothing. Nothing. I did that with hundreds of people all around Philly. I said, wait. I think I could do this. And, bro, the next day I called him. I'm like, yo, you mind teaching me what I need to do to do what you just did? Do I need a website? He said, no. Do I need this? He said, no. Do I need this? He said, no. Like, I don't need none of that. He said, man, you need a flyer. Show him what you're going to do. I model his flyer. I use my cell phone. I was hustling it in the Facebook group. He said, that's it? Bro, I started from watching him do it, and then I think I started event spaces. Somebody told me that she gave me the idea. I'm this guy. Somebody tell me I should try something, I try it. Every time. <laughs> Every business I have is because somebody, I'm not this creative. They said, you should try this. I said, that sounds like a good idea. And I just go try it. So I started Circle of Greatness Academy probably seven years ago off of that premise, man. It sounds so familiar, right, because, mm -hmm. like, um, I interview a lot of people, and yep. I tell people all the time, because, like, I'm not, I don't really listen to the most music. I got my same little music I listen to. I listen, I interview a lot of artists, but what yeah, happened you got, is. Your Baltimore sound similar, because that, listen to, oh, oh, like, yeah, that yeah. was the girl, you just sound like the girl Jessica in my mind. Jessica, I only know a couple, I don't, I don't know her. That's my dog. But 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 I'm saying, how you said, you listen nah, you to, me? it yeah, was the yeah. same as that. It, it's crazy. She just flashed in my brain just then. But it's, it's crazy, because some people will say, you don't sound like you from Baltimore, like, and, yeah. and then other people like they could hear. But I said it to say, from my interviews, only thing happens is like people are say, "Yo, you should interview this person." I don't, I won't, I won't know him from Adam and Eve. I'm like, all right, bet. I literally just listen to, like, all right, cool. Like I just interview everybody, and sometimes I I fall upon somebody that's lit, and I ain't even know they was lit, but yeah. I say it sound familiar. All right, so this conversation getting good, right? I'm starting to learn the importance of like doing classes, right? Yeah. But I'm gonna say a year. Let's go a year ago. Give me some advice. So I used to be this guy that um, I don't gotta sell you no class. You know what I'm saying? You ask me, I just I just tell you the information. Yeah. That was me. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, what's the question though? Tell Give me some advice. If, if you if it's saying if a that year was, ago. Yeah. If that that's me, right? Like I don't I ain't, I don't even sell you no class. I just 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 it's hit me on Instagram. I give you the information for free. So I don't think there's nothing wrong with giving game away for free. Um, so if you know EYL, what they did for their first year or two years, they never had a payment, never nothing. They was just giving so much value. Mm. And there's two ways you could do this. One, you can give a lot of value. I don't know, even know EYL, they my gosh, Troy and Shadi and them. Like, I don't know if they had this mass plan of they're going to build one of the greatest black media companies in the world. They crushing it, going crazy. Crazy. But, when they started, I don't know if they was like, yeah, we just going to give so much game. And then a few years, we're finally going to offer opportunities. I have no, I got to ask Shadi. I don't, I'm really not sure. But they led with value. That way you're talking like, man, matter of fact, let's hop on the call. Let's talk. You're giving value that way, but it's not to the masses. Mm. If you're going to go that route, I'm like, go do it to the masses. Put it on your YouTube do a podcast around it. Put it on your Instagram so you're not just helping one to one. To one. The issue that a lot of us have, we do one to one instead of one to many. Mm. How they was able to win more because it wasn't one to one. It was one to the world, one to many. Because a lot of them people you're talking about, hey, I, I ain't going to say you know, I'm going to give you game. 90% of them people, because they don't pay, they ain't going to do nothing with it anyway. It is what it is. I tell people, you don't pay, you don't pay attention. and There's no transaction, there'll be no transformation. How I told you, gotta when you uh, say shit like yeah, that, yeah, bro, you gotta so, slow it. So down. if you don't pay, you don't pay attention, mm. and there's no transaction, there'll be no transformation. Mm. One of my best friends paid a gentleman thirty thousand dollars to do something for him around the webinar and do two calls with him. He made sure he listened to him. He listened, <laughs> but he sent it to me, Neil. You gotta listen to these training calls. You crushed it. 
You think I listened to him? Nah. Why? It's cool, but it's like you it didn't, didn't pay it, that money. I didn't pay the money. You didn't so pay I didn't, that hard, I didn't, I didn't money. physically feel yeah. what it feels like. Right. So I didn't do crap with it. So a year, you could be devaluing yourself. One, a year ago or right now, I'm going to say get a game away to the masses so people mm. could see, oh, he the truth. So whenever it's something called um, goodwill and the law of reciprocity, which means, yo, this dude gave me so much game for free. I'm buying this on the strengths. Uh, Carter Cofield, he and my mastermind, he bought my $47 ebook, IG Cash Book. I told him about this Instagram play called the Overnight Play, where you post overnight 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m. At the time, I think he joined my mastermind. He gave me $40,000. I was at a Circle CEO event. I made this offer. If you're ready to join, come to the stage. My man ran up there to, to give me $40,000. He said, man, I'm just giving you your money. I owe you this. I'm just giving you your money back. I added so much value to him through a book and through my Instagram videos. Let me go do that. And now now he made several million. He just bought a Lamborghini, yours. He made several million dollars this year. Mm. I'm his first mentor at this level that gave him so much games. He run every play that I say run. Like, he's going crazy. I say all that to say that. When you're giving away the game for free, you want to give it to the masses so you can serve more people versus that one-on-one combat because your time is limited. Right now, I'm like, yo, Jay, I got eight people today. They want to give you $100 an hour or $500 an hour, whatever it is you charge, a thousand, whatever it is, but I need to block your schedule off for the next week. You're going to do one person an hour at $100 an hour. Granted, you're going to make $800 a day, yeah. but you're going to do that for eight hours every day for the next five days. So 8, 16, 24, 30, you serving 40 people. Only a few of them going to probably take action on it, but you you just use your whole week to do that when mm. you could have just probably put it up on your YouTube, blast it, the world, serve more people. Second thing, I think peep, you should bottle up your expertise and put it into a course or book for those individuals who do want to pay you more. I mm. think you should do. Like for those who like, yo, Jay, I want the fast pass, the podcasting or whatever it is that you're inter- interested in. Because you have that people. I tell you, you got three different people. You got a free, my mentor calls it freepo people, which means free people. You got like people who just want to give you just enough to get a taste. Then you got like your mid people. Then you got like your premium buyers. Like, yo, what's the best thing you got? And then do you got anything else that I have to sell? You know what? Where I think I went wrong or I overlooked. I think I overlooked um, my drive to figure it out, right? Because I got to a space where I thought it was simple because I did it. Yeah. Right? Like, bro, like it was literally simple. Like I figured everything in here, I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Until I start seeing people come in and be like, oh, my God, this is I'm like, what? Like, yeah. to me, it was simple. Yeah, simple. But to the average person who want to do not it, simple. it's not simple. Yeah. You know, somebody tell me uh, this is important for you to know. This in general because what you're doing right now is all average to you. Mm. Everything you're doing is like this crap regular. Like, you doing podcasts. I'm sure you got hundred k views, million views, whatever it is. Just channel growing how many subs you got now uh 57 now 57k growing crazy that's not getting 57,000 youtube subs is not easy though we at 18,000 i'm like we've been working to get them so it ain't no it ain't sweet on youtube like instagram and that crap ain't sweet 57,000 subs is a lot of work but it's important just for you to know as you go on your journey you got to stop seeing yourself as you see yourself and start seeing yourself as the world see you should I say that again? <laughs> you see, I'm trying to get hey, you. You got to stop seeing yourself as you see yourself, and you got to start seeing you as the world see yourself, right? And that's important because you're – and it's, it's kind of good to do both because if you're seeing yourself as you see yourself, is average, which means you got to keep going, but you also got to keep an account. There are people like, yo, Jay, I want to ge- become your premium buyer. I want to become a part of Jay's elite thing that he's offering, mm. if that makes sense. That shit hard. Yeah. <laughs> that shit hard, bro. Yeah. Yo, so I see you. Bro, you got a lot. You, you really outside, bro. You really doing your thing, dog. I appreciate it, bro. You, um, you posted the, uh, I think, 
I don't like this, bro. Don't make me feel like this no more, bro. So I'm with Shans, right? Yeah. We did the interview. Yeah. And he like, bro, I got a um, I got a slide. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go to the brunch and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, don't, <laughs> bro, don't be leaving me, yeah. buddy. You feel me? Like, and you and you tell people. One thing that I see before I even get to the question, yeah. you always giving a call in action. Yeah, got like you, bro. If you if, if you want to join the, uh, the yeah. Yeah. put event space right now. Yeah, like what, what, what's that? Bro, before I get call, to my question, what's that about? Bro, like look, as I'm doing it, right? You see this? I don't know if you see the joint. I see running. it. I see it. Automation. Those the look. That's crazy. No, I, I probably it. can't see it. The joint is like popping. The, the, the golly. Yeah. They must have just did a post. Let me check. See, that's automation. Now, look, let me just see Joan going. Well, oh, you ain't posting nothing on it. No, nah, they ain't posting nothing. This, is, just, this guy's good. Yeah, they, they be on it. But anyway. He said he must have did a post. I'm like, what yeah, you Yeah, you see. <laughs> I just jump, 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 jump. So call to action, bro, is you got to have a call to action, man. CTA, every post needs to have. T- if you don't tell your people what to do, they don't know what to do. They're going to do nothing. Mm. Why are these YouTubers like, subscribe, share? Because if you don't say it, they're going to forget to do it. Facts. Not that they don't want to show us love. They don't. Oh, yeah. I, I do need to subscribe to that. Oh, I do need to click the link in this bio. I do. You got to keep. You got to act as if they haven't seen it yet. Even if you believe they see it, assume they have it. Bro, you so good with this, bro. I swear. I'm going to just give him my testimony, right? <laughs> I got your number. Yeah. Right? We already set the interview up. Yeah. The guy is just going crazy. Man, if you wanted the, uh, the key to my mastermind, just right mastermind. My, my, right mastermind. And I'm not going to lie. So, I'm going to be real. Like, yeah. me, like, just me, who I am, I'm like, I'm not about to do that. That shit is corny, right? Yeah. Like, that's what I think. I'm like, I got to text this guy. Yeah. But you were so convincing, like, and I saw it so many times. Like, I'm about to write this shit. I'm about to write mastermind under the yeah. last post. Yeah. But, like, that's crazy because there are people who aren't. That might sound crazy. I don't want to say like us, but there are people who. Don't do yeah. what we do and and, yeah. and 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 to get excited about that. Like, oh, yeah. I need that. Yeah. No, it's real game I'm giving people. I don't care who you are. I got people getting bread sending those messages. They Because somebody who get bread want more bread. Facts. <laughs> and, it, like, I have people, my peers today, I got so many. Me- Look at your blue check right here. Mm. It's all day long just. This, yeah. So if he they, don't see you, if he don't they, see you. Yeah, DM, he really mean it, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> let me let me crazy. tell you, bro, what people don't get, bro, they tripping. It's called funnel hacking. Mm. When you find something that a successful person don't – everything that I'm doing is two things. So people could be hurting themselves or helping them. A lot of stuff that I do is a test. I got to test it to see if it worked. Mm. I had some people, yo, I went and modeled this joint. And I'm like, that was a test. That wasn't a good thing to model. Mm. That's why you got to be inside my environments because you know – I'm telling you, y'all, don't go run that play. It was somebody said the other day, yo, I saw you did this thing with the seven day thing. That didn't work. Don't try it. People are gonna go try a crap that didn't even work. Mm. That's why you gotta get in these environments. But I got people who who do a similar world. They all sending these messages because they like, oh, what Neo doing? I, I gotta see what they doing so I could get up on it. Mm. So never have that idea. I don't want to do that because no, I'm doing that because I need to know what you're doing, what you're saying, because I'm hacking that crap. Mm. Oh, you saying this? You doing that? Let me let me model this. Let me model that. So you said you 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 said do something and people try it and it didn't work. Say it, say it one more time. You would say try something or like the seven day thing. Somebody did it, but it didn't work. But you're so like, it so in my mastermind, somebody hit me up. My assistant hit me up. Yo, three people in the mastermind said, can you give us the framework for the seven-day thing you did? I'm like, no, we ain't going to give it to them. It didn't work. Okay. But someone else is looking from outside in like, I'm about to go try that thing. But you about to try something that didn't work. Okay. Because you're not in my world to really to really know if it worked or not. So my mastermind, I'm telling y'all, every play that, that's working and not working, try this, don't try this, do this, don't do that. That's kind of a weird space to be in now that I think about it because – if somebody's not like in your circle, yeah, that could be easy, like to throw dirt on your name almost. If that makes sense, because like let's say you talking about something, yeah, and they could just try it because yep. they they not really close to you for yep. real. I'm like that's nigga a scam. Like I ain't yeah, about to fuck yeah. with this. You ever had any? Yeah, I mean you get the scam allegation, and I got this from my guy Runway. Um, scam stands for still confused about money. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In case you met, still confused about money. That's what I call people that say scam. I got that from Runway and. Um, you gotta break this down, cause a nigga that's that ain't in that 
mind frame bro. yet. I don't get that. I'm like, bro, a scam is somebody that's fucking me over and I ain't get I no, lost no, money. I mean, that's how so they break it assume down. it, but so, I'm just giving Yeah, yeah, you, no, I'm saying break when, it down. When my guy said I'm like, oh, that's powerful. But people throw that word around so much, dog. Like, it's like, it's like they just can't wait. People are looking for Jay to fail. Mm. They can't wait. They can't wait for Neo to slip up, dog. Yes. I'm talking about. I told y'all that nigga was fucking. <laughs> they can't wait for that. They are waiting. Mm. Can't wait for him to slip. I knew something wasn't right about my man. So, like, somebody would be like this, bro. They'll go DM me. Yo, you didn't get my products. Ah, you didn't. You didn't send me the products. You scam. You a scammer. One, bro, I'm not scamming you for $37. I'm not scamming you for a dollar. I'm selling products for a dollar, 37, 40. Listen to me. I you think I'm gonna purposely mess up my name for 37 or 47 dollars, man? Like I I'm not. That's first. And then then uh, we'll message them. Hey, check your spam. We got a it's an auto save message. Check your spam. Da, da, da. If you don't see it, message info at Circle Greatness Academy. Oh, I'm sorry. It was in my spam. Hmm. Now, I mean, Tom, we get that every day. Oh, my fault. It was, you just cursed us all the way out, and you had the product all along. You just didn't read your email. You didn't check your promotional mail. So, I mean, just people are always going to have something. People are, bro. I had a guy, like, trolling me so bad, man, like, going live about me. He was killing me. Most people would have crumbled. You scam. You getting over on all of these people. It's the pandemic. You got people going out here opening event spaces. You telling them they can make three thousand and five thousand a month. People out here are dying. You, you, you are like I'm talking about drilling me, scam. Like, how do my, you get out? How do you handle this? I'm curious now. Well, one one thing about me, bro, I ignore stuff like that. A lot of people, uh, you go ahead and reply. Now you got your followers on it. My man, yo, bro, you got to go live with him, man. You got to go ahead and set the tone straight. <laughs> we see that a lot. Yeah, let me go live with him. And now all my fathers who have no clue about what's going on down there where now they now they trying to wonder if. So I most mostly for me, I don't respond or acknowledge. One of my guys sent me something earlier, like, look what he said. Bro, don't even send me nothing like that. I don't even care. I'm on my – I'm locked in. Like, let me stay laser focused. Mm. So, one, I don't reply. I don't think you should reply to those things. What was the? It was the question. I, what was the question around that? Because you was just going was into, into the it. dude was uh, drilling you. He was talking about how you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So bro. spaces. And oh yeah, yo, bro. But I'm so like, the group of people that came up out of that, they went in so crazy right now, dog. I'm talking. About, I got one Tanisha. Just crossed a million dollars. She just opened up her third space right here in Atlanta, Georgia, full time teacher. I got another Tanisha doing twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. Single mother, uh, Demetrius. He just joined my mastermind. Right, my mastermind. He paid me seventy five k. He said, "Bro, I made so much money off of the 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 event space. I was able to now join this to learn how to show people how to open up event spaces." Right. He got his in the pandemic. Like some of my best students all opened up in the pandemic. And here's another thing: what they don't know what the pandemic did. We was able to go in there and get buildings for cheap. Mm. rents for cheap so one of my students in florida she her rent is three grand for her location bro in florida she's opening one up in a similar in the same shopping center for seven grand a mm. little bit bigger Damn. paying double why because you didn't get it during the pandemic Damn. so all of them people came up i mean and this dude was killing me like they don't like, even know to have bro these people up these people are they retiring, they're, like they're getting out of work. They living their best life right now, dog. All right, before we get out of here, bro, yeah. let's have, because you're talking a lot of high level yeah. getting money shit. For, 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 for the average nigga that might be watching my shit, right? Let's say they saved up $10,000, right? Yeah. They saved up, ten. they worked hard for that, they saved it up. Yeah. What would you suggest be a play for them to make more money? To let's say, not even double, let's say get a, a third back or something like that. More on an investment ROI. If I made ten, if I had ten thousand dollars, what would you invest in, or what would you put it in to make some money? Honestly, bro, I put it in into. 
I will put this investment in myself. Mm. One of my buddies, not to go high level, but his son called the S and P five hundred. He called my Alex Hermo. He called it the S and Me five hundred. <laughs> the, the greatest investment, bro. I personally, bro, I would take a year. I would figure out what I like. I'll probably take half of that and just really be buying courses and stuff like trying to learn i will learn op stock options that could be an option right uh guy on instagram c jack my guy aristotle like i will learn op stock options like mm -hmm. i will learn um and and again i'm gonna tell you all my stuff in a second but i'm just trying to give you i'm i want people to learn a skill that can continue to pay them where you don't need a brand mm -hmm. you don't need Cause if you got a brand and you do something wrong and mess your brand and mess your face up, you now can't make no money. Mm. I will learn Facebook ads, Instagram ads. I will learn agency work. You go get, let's say I was running Facebook ads, right? This one person between two agencies, I'm giving one forty five hundred dollars a month to run my YouTube. I'm giving one three thousand dollars a month to run my Facebook, right? They took time to learn these skills. I gave them seventy five hundred dollars a month between the two. I put my credit card on file to run the advertising. Mm. Right. So imagine if you learned the skill of advertising, all you're doing is running the ads for them. I'm giving these agencies seventy five hundred dollars a month. You go get five clients at three thousand dollars each. You got fifteen thousand dollars a month and you just learned a skill. Guess what? You also can learn these skills and tests like, yo, let me go do this for five people for free. Hmm. Another thing I would do right now, 10 grand, I would learn sales. I would go buy a sales course, go find somebody like you, like a David, like a me, that have high ticket products or programs. It don't gotta be digital, it could be physical, and you sell them for them on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And you get 10%. That's a, that's if a fact somebody right sell there. a $50,000 program for me, you getting $5,000. Do that once a month, twice a month. You now go to every event that they're going at, whole, selling their product on their behalf, networking, communicating with people. So the easiest thing I would do is I would learn sales. I would watch, I learned sales watching, I, I already knew sales, but I learned sales watching Dan, I watched every video on Dan Lock YouTube. That made me some money. I went to one of my friends, and which is now still my business partner, like, yo bro, let me go close some sales for you. How much you want for this service? He said, I want this much. I came back and gave him, he said, yo, I'm, I'm willing to do it for 500. I came back and said, yo, I got you 1,000. Mm. We business partners. We getting 50-50. I, I got him double what he wanted. He was getting 250 for the product. I sold it for 1,000. So now he's getting double what he wanted, and I'm getting the other half. We built a multi-million dollar business doing that, all off of sales. Mm. Learn, learn a skill. You take three to six months to learn a skill. Then another play, get your event space. Ten grand, you could get up an event space, right? You literally find it. I'll show you how to find it. Use zero percent interest. I mean, excuse me. You go on websites like Crexy.com, LoopNet.com. You start searching for buildings, one to three thousand square foot spaces. Next thing you want to fund it. I don't know if they got credit or not, but if they got credit, OPM, other people's money. You want to go ahead and leverage business credit, right? You want to uh, get. Something like a floor and decor car that got 0% interest, right? You want to get a Mercury car. You want to get a Office Depot car. Like, you want to just start getting cards. Or another play. Go to your mom. Go to your dad. Go to your pairs, your homies. Yo, man, y'all, I just got this event space program. I just got this program. Yo, let me know if y'all willing to put some money up. Let's be 50-50 partners. I run it all. You put up the cash. I run the business. Take another step. You got somebody else you know. Listen to me. You put up all the money. I'm going to need 20K for this investment. I'm going to give you a 10 to 20% return on your money. You still retain me in ownership. I'm going to give you 10 to 20% on whatever you're giving me. So just say if they gave you a, say if they gave you $10,000. 10% return in a year is $1,000 extra on your $10,000 or $2,000 if 20%. But now you still maintain and keep all of the ownership. So now the game in, in 2023 is about getting creative. You got to start thinking outside of it's a lot easier than you think. I had 10 homies put together. I said, yo, y'all all give me $300 a month. It's 3000 It's 36000 at the end of the year. We're going to start four businesses off of that. We're going to open up an event space business. We're going to open up a, a, a moving business because we're going to move the furniture. We're going to open up a furniture rental business. And we're going to open up a catering business. 
all off of $36,000. I keep 50%, y'all keep the other 50%, and we we joint run it. I, now I would have owned the business. We never did it because this was earlier on with my day ones. They couldn't see the picture. So we never did it. But just imagine $36,000. Right now to this day, that business probably would be doing thirty to fifty k a month five years ago if they would have said I'm all in. Yo, you said something right about your homies. You did it with your homies. This shit is good. I hope you niggas are listening. This shit is I hope good. They, they, I ain't gonna lie. They, bro, they probably ain't listen because they, they try and hear some ratchet stuff. They this might shit, not. They might be missing it, man. This I hope they catch this, this shit. This shit is good. This shit yeah. is fire. All some, right, so worth some bread. Let's say you, you know how like um, we hear people like Kevin Hart, LeBron James, they put on that family and they, they working for the business, right? But then we hear other stories like you told your homies, they missed the train. Yeah, they're on board now, but it take time, bro. It take time. I think that might answer the question because I was gonna say, how do you get people to get it? Because some people don't get it. Like if I like, let's say the po- the, the sales play, right? I know that I'm like, bro, I got a podcast. I give you twenty percent to get me sponsorships or whatever. Find people that's that because it's people out there who want to invest in it. All you gotta do is just go find them. Yeah, they don't really see the benefit. They see it's lit or whatever, but they don't see the benefit. And how do you do you convince them or do you get somebody who's a professional? How how do you do it when you want to have your whole team winning? Well. Bro, I stopped actually convincing. I actually just swung the block for my homies for the last time I told them. Mm. It's my last time swinging the block. You can feel it, niggas. I swung the block. I can no, feel bro. it. I'm like, yo, I'm going to swing the block. Well, that, this is my last time, my guys. Mm. Bro, you know how I many people I put on, they don't get it? My sisters, they don't get it. I think my, my wife's trying to get my sister to work back for us. It's five years ago. Another thing, you come work for our company, we grinding. This crap ain't sweet either. So it's like, it is what it, but... In a few years, your, your life will be unrecognizable from opportunities, from investments you're going to be able to make. Just being a partner with me in various things is like a lot of people don't get it. But I think for my homies, I'll give you an example. One of my guys, Derek, he's my best friend I grew up with. He's an injury lawyer. Make sure you all Patterson Injury Law. If you all ever need anything with injury, get you uh, get you that. that what do you say? I, don't, I not only make my. But he said, I not only give legal advice, I make the check nice. But he's a prime example, bro. I'm like, yo, bro, let's open you up a law firm. Bro, let's get you a law firm. He went, he went to go work for a law firm. Like, bro, get you a law firm. And he was giving, mind you, this is a lawyer, bro. He spent eight years in school, came out, I think they was giving him 50000 A lawyer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This credentialed up. You're a doctor, essentially, right, of yeah, law. Nice. No, bro, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. He finally circled around. And I tell him this all the time, if, it, if like, this public knowledge, right? Because <laughs> I don't ever want people to be like, dang, you throwing you your, your man people the bus. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but more of the story, he circled the block, came back. But now it's harder now, meaning we, we he getting cases, we doing good. But one of my other guys who I tore influence on marketing, Top Dog. That's my dog. Yeah, he, he, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I taught him influencer marketing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, we at our apartment building. He is going crazy. Yeah. It, and my man, Runway, named, gave him a slogan. Top mm. dog get you top, top dollar. Yeah. Runway made that up. Runway's a, <laughs> Runway, a, a, that boy's a genius with naming stuff. So. He my sponsor. Like, yeah, yeah see? Love my dog. Yeah, yeah, love. Yeah. So, I say all that to say, he would have been top dog. Mm. But he had to listen to me. Top Dog was like, "Freak, man, I'm running through a wall." <laughs> Top Dog was on heroin or coke or something. He like, "I, I've done done the worst. The worst could have almost OD. It ain't nothing work." He just started going crazy. Yeah, he say, he say, um, what he say? Um, he was like, "Marketing don't cost me. It makes some something like that." I forgot what he said. Yeah, marketing it, don't cost money. It, it makes, makes you money. money. Yeah. yeah, it ain't like it ain't gonna cost to that. He get everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody. He know what he doing. Yeah. Damn, that's bro. This is this is fine. We could do another one. We could yeah. do, bro. But next time I want my invite to the uh, to the brunch, bro. That I got shit you. Is crazy, yeah. bro. Yeah. I might not have a million dollars, but bro, like that shit is just. I just want to be in that room, bro. That, that, crazy. that room was hard too. And you did it. I feel like you did. You intentionally did that because you was like, I'm gonna make this shit look good. Everybody gonna want to be a part. Like, cause that I'm like. Yeah. Oh, next nah, time it's gonna bro. be crazier too. That shit, bro. That shit was in. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, That's I planned that in a day too, so it wasn't even planned. Yeah, if I bro. plan it right, 
put some money behind it. That that was dumb. Yo, who is your who is your five immediate circle? This is just me. I'm just being selfish now, cause like yo, five I, immediate circles. Like I see him five hundred talking yeah, to that's you. That's one of my guys. My who is like yeah yeah yeah. We talk every day. We do a lot of trolling. Who is top other. five in your circle right now? Not friendships, but like the people talk to you the most. Um, that's a good question. Him five hundred for sure. Joshua. Who is Joshua? Let me know. That's my main dude. Uh, digital marketing. He's a he's a goat on that. What's his Instagram yeah, name? Uh, is this supposed to so we can paint pictures? Yeah, for people? Uh, is it his Instagram official Joshua Crisp? Okay. Um. Doug Depp. I don't talk to Doug every day as much as I done. That's one of my partners. He taught me real estate. So funny. It's like I don't like. I talked a lot of them. David Shans. We talk every week because we run. We we make money together. Um, what about Justin? Justin Phillips. Yeah, Justin. I don't P. talk to Justin no. every. He another one. You know, I, I got Justin in digital marketing. Yeah, I, I'm just I, trying to paint a picture. Yeah, I for put people. I put Justin on. <laughs> I'm trying to paint a um, picture for people real quick. So so Justin, I talk to Justin not daily or nothing like that. More every f- few times a month. Jeez, that's hard. I I talk to so many different people. I'm sitting there trying to look through my texts. I talk to a bunch of different people. It's not one person every day, and I don't really got a top five. I just talk to a lot of people that's making crap happen. I'm looking at my text. So today, Shans, Anthony O'Neill, Donnell, Prince Donnell, Dave Wong K, my, my trademark lawyer, um, uh, what about Milano, um, Carlton Dennis, who do tax preparation. What Milano? Uh, Milano D. Rouge. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Tosh, my broker, um, Keon Henderson, Wall- Pastor Keon, Wall Street Trapper, Trapper. I talked to Trapper two to three times. Just, I'm just trying that's to paint a partner. picture for the people that's listening. Yeah, if you if you see what I'm doing right now, I'm yeah. just painting this picture. This is crazy. This yeah, is this all day, bro. This is just bro. Yo, yeah. Next time, yeah, bro, you gotta follow me back on the gram. So I'm gonna say that. On I already did that. You did. You did you yeah, follow me back, bro? Yeah, sure. bro. Come no, on, put him in on the spot right now, yeah, bro. Hold on. Yeah, make sure you yeah, get me sure back. I make sure that. I get this invite, dog. Cause I'm this sh- shit. I think I've been did that. Hold on. I did that. Did they? Uh, let's see. Did they? Oh yeah. crap! Yeah, it's all good. It's all good though. Oh, it's done. I don't take it personally. It's all good. We thought I did it that day. No, it's all good. We met. It's all good. Yeah, I appreciate you for pulling up, dog. I appreciate you. This shit was amazing. It was a lot of value. Yeah, right, I, I hope I hope people take something away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but th- th- is there anything that um, you wanted to push that we didn't touch on? I think we really touched on, man. Just people tapping with me on Instagram at Neil Deviso. Um, interested in working with me? Um, really, just follow me on Instagram. Tap into my YouTube. We got a whole bunch of stuff. I don't got one thing in particular for you, but wherever you are in your business journey, I have something for you. Whether it's high level, just getting started, wherever you're at. Just follow me on Instagram um, and go to my YouTube and just Nehemiah Davis at Neil DeViso on Instagram and want to work with me on a high level mastermind with Neo.com, N-E-O.com. Love to be able to help you all. But my more important thing is I just wanted to give you guys value. Don't listen to this hour episode and don't run the plays, y'all. This information cost me millions of dollars. I've been in this thing for 15 years. So tap in, y'all. Hopefully, it's going to be able to help y'all level up even more than what you're already doing. Let's go. Appreciate you, dog. Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. This Let's is go. game. Yeah. You niggas better listen, man. You niggas, listen. You niggas better listen. That's a wrap. We don't have nothing else to say, man. We out.